Hello students, watch this video till the end to understand all these erythemas which are extremely important in dermatology for various entrance examinations. Myself, Dr. Madhuran Shinva, certified dermatologist from India discussing derma related topics in my YouTube channel. So if you are new to this, please do hit that subscribe button and also hit that bell icon so that you will get all the latest video notifications whenever I am posting any new video related to dermatology. So let us start our discussion with this very important type of erythema which is erythema multiforme. You might have heard about this erythema multiforme. You might have heard that in this target lesions are present. So basically what is this in the etiopathogenesis? It is understood that it is basically a mucocutaneous immune reaction, mucocutaneous immune reaction that occurs in the setting of an infection, infection in certain predisposed individuals. So what is that infection? Basically, the most important, most common infection is a viral infection that is herpes simplex viral infection which uh, will be uh, presenting. In the exam, the most likely they are going to give you a picture with a few vesicular lesions, group of vesicular lesions present near the lips and they are going to give you this target lesions which are present mainly over the palms that is acrofacial sites. And if you get this kind of a picture, you should understand that yes, this is a case of erythema multiforme in which there is there are multiple target lesions which are present. And what is a target lesion? Target lesion is uh, a lesion which will have three zones. Center is going to be, central uh, portion is going to be erythematous. One second, friends. Yes. If you observe this single lesion what you can observe is at the very center of this lesion there is the erythema so this is zone 1 and followed by this in the next zone what you are able to observe is there is a zone of pallor this is zone 2 and it is surrounded by an erythematous rim which is the third zone which is the third zone so these three zones put together it is appearing like a target uh, which is used uh, in archery and uh, in the gunfire. So that is the reason why these lesions are called as target lesions. So I hope erythema multiforme is clear to all of you. Now let us see another skin condition where target lesion can be seen. Target lesion can be seen and that condition is called as erythema migrans. Erythema migrans. Erythema migrans. So you might be wondering uh, so, even in erythema multiforme and erythema migrans, in both of them, target lesions can be seen. So, how can we differentiate both of them? So, a simple difference is that in erythema migrans, the target lesion, it is also called as bull's eye lesion, bull's eye lesion. And this lesion is going to be a single lesion in the case of erythema migrans. Single target lesion will be seen. Single target lesion will be seen. And uh, if you observe this image carefully, you can see again three zones are present here. So you can see a central erythematous zone is there. Zone 1 again the pale zone. Zone 2 is there again uh, erythematous rim which is zone 3 is present. So, what is the basic differences in erythema migrans? There will be a single target lesion, and at this center where uh, this zone one is actually the site where the exodistic will be present. Exodistic will be present here. If you observe with a magnifying lens, there will be this stick, and basically because of the bite of the stick, there is going to be a Borrelia burgdorferi infection which will spread through the bite of this tick, through the bite of this tick. And this erythema migrans, this erythema migrans, it represents the initial cutaneous manifestation of this disease which is called as Lyme's disease. And it is seen in 60 to 90 percent of the patients diagnosed with this Lyme's disease. Very, very important, friends. So, whenever we see single target lesion or it is also called as bull cell lesion, then our diagnosis will be erythema migrans. And now let us see the third erythema, which is erythema marginatum. I hope you might have heard about this Jones criteria, Jones criteria in rheumatic fever, in acute rheumatic fever. So, in this Jones criteria, erythema marginatum is one of the major criteria. One of the major criteria. This is going to present with migratory annular polycyclic erythematous eruption. Erythematous eruption. 
okay and what are the all the associated uh, findings which can be seen that we will see in the next slide in the form of a mnemonic but if you observe this erythema marginatum is uh, seen most commonly in the children it is seen most commonly in the children and here you can see in the picture there are some erythematous annular polycyclic eruptions which are present so these are the uh, very very important major and minor criteria in rheumatic fever in the major criteria we can see the mnemonic itself is j o n e s so in the jones criteria it is uh, made into the major criteria so joint involvement will be there so j is joint involvement in the form of arthritis it is migrating polyarthritis basically and o is myocarditis myocarditis the uh, there will be inflammation of the heart muscle and n stands for subcutaneous nodules subcutaneous nodule nodular lesions uh, are going to be uh, just like papule and plaque nodule is also a solid circumscribed lesion which will be more than 0.5 cm nodule but it is going to have a depth component okay uh, unlike papule and plug this nodule will have a depth component that is on palpation you can identify that the lesion is having uh, uh, it is going to be present very deep into the skin so in the next slide we are going to see about erythema nodosum okay that is a different condition so just uh, as a primer you will understand what is the difference between a nodule papule and plug only on palpation otherwise on looking the skin you cannot differentiate them and e stands for erythema marginatum e stands for erythema marginatum s stands for sydenham scoria so these are the major criteria and in the minor criteria we have c a f e pal kf pal c stands for crp which will be increased a stands for arthralgia here we told it is migrating polyarthritis arthritis here there will be inflammation here the patient will complain of pain okay in the minor criteria f stands for fever e stands for elevated esr levels p stands for i'm sorry this is not pitrasis rocha okay it is not pitrasis rocha it is pr interval which is prolonged prolonged pr interval on ecg and a stands for anamnesis of rheumatism anamnesis simply means that the patient will recall if you ask about any history of rheumatic fever the patient will recall of the history of uh, this rheumatic fever L stands for leukocytosis. So, if two major and uh, uh, along with the throat culture for group A beta amyloid streptococcus or elevated ASLO titers are present, then we can diagnose a patient as rheumatic fever. Or if there is one major criteria along with two minor criteria and these criteria if they are fulfilled, then also we can diagnose a patient as rheumatic fever. And this is erythema nodosum. So, this is a different uh, condition. Here, the patients are going to have subcutaneous nodules, subcutaneous nodules, okay. But uh, here, these are going to be erythematous and tender subcutaneous nodule. These are going to be very, very tender in nature. And what is the uh, pathogenesis which is widely accepted is basically there is going to be some delayed hypersensitivity response to a variety of antigens. And what are these antigens? that depends upon the cause there are many causes for erythema nodosum but in the next slide we are going to see what are the most common causes but before that these patients are also going to have fever arthralgias and malaise and uh, these subcutaneous no nodules are going to be predominantly present over the pre tibial area pre tibial area and they are going to be present bilaterally symmetrical as you can see here these patients are going to have over both the legs both the legs Okay, erythematous tender nodules. And the most common cause is 60% of the times the cause is unknown. And whenever we are, uh, you know, uh, not knowing about the pathogenesis, pathogenesis, we are going to be called ourselves as idiots. So, combining both of them, it is idiopathic. And 60% of the times, erythema nodosum is idiopathic. The cause cannot be found out. But in the rest of the cases, the most common infectious cause for erythema nodosum is streptococcal sore throat streptococcal infection okay and uh, the rest of the two uh, erythemas are not very very important but they can be asked uh, because there is a possibility of integration erythema annular centrifugum which is simply called as eac 
there will be annular lesions annular lesions will be present uh, as you can see here in the images this uh, this is the image of the buttocks and here the characteristic scale which will be present it is called as trailing scale trailing scale what do you mean by trailing scale if you observe this lesion if you observe this lesion the uh, you know erythematous border is a, you know extending like this it is extending like this to the normal skin, surrounding skin and if you observe carefully the scale is trailing behind this active border this active border is continuing to involve the normal skin whereas this scale this scale if you observe it is trailing behind this active border so that is the reason why it is called as trailing skin it is more commonly seen in adults Although often idiopathic in nature, it can be associated with certain infections. Most uh, important ones uh, which you need to remember is fungal infection, tinea pedis. And the other type of erythema is erythema gyratum repens. Uh, figurate erythema that is migratory and it is composed of concentric rings which are going to give a wood grain appearance. What, what is a wood grain? If you cut uh, a tree, then uh, you can get to see this kind of uh, morphology. And similar morphology appears in these patients over the skin and that is the reason why it is called as wood grain appearance. And basically erythema gyratum repens represents a paraneoplastic phenomenon and the most important malignancy uh, which is underlying uh, this skin manifestation is pulmonary that is lungs. And this can spread at a speed of 1 cm per day. 1 cm per day it will extend onto the normal skin. And once the neoplasm is successfully treated, these lesions are also going to heal. Okay. So, here the buzzwords which you must remember are once again just we will summarize wood grain appearance, erythema gyratum repens and it is a paraneoplastic phenomenon where the lungs are involved. So, once again we will 